I wasn't terribly upset at the Wilder Fury decision. I wasn't terribly upset. I mm -hmm. thought, I thought, you know what? I think Tyson Fury did enough to win. But when I look at it, I like when, I like when they score damage. Damage means a lot to me. And when I look at that fight, when, when Wilder hurt him, he hurt him twice, and he hurt him real bad. I mean, I think that's worth a lot. And I think he was always threatening. So I felt like, I don't know if I would agree with a draw. I think it was a close decision win for Tyson Fury, but I didn't hate it. I yeah. didn't hate it because I think I'd like to see them fight again. Absolutely. I mean, it was one of them fights where, yes, you're 100% right, that it could end in a draw, and I think everybody would be kind of satisfied with that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, with the, the count and knockdown, which – I was so frustrated with the the comments, and you know I had to stay away from the social media and the, the boxing groups and and things like that because Why is that? Of, oh, just you know the some of the um, opinions of people. That's the way to put it. Uh, oh, that that was a long count, and this yeah. and that. There's been thousands of fights in the last ten years, and I've very seldom heard anybody complain about a count. You know that that fight. Um, they don't do a ten second count in boxing. They go by the referee's count. Right. And for another thing where uh, Wilder kind of hurt himself, the referee tells you in the locker room before the fight, and he explains it to you, go to your neutral corner. If you come out of your neutral corner, I will stop the count. I mean, you know that. So the first thing I used to do when I dropped somebody is I ran my ass to that neutral corner, you know, so that referee could start counting. Um, I didn't see any issue with the, the knockdown. I even recorded it on my phone, and if you did go by the 10-second count, Tyson Fury still beat it. Really? Yes, I have it. You know, I'd have to go through and find it. Um, I thought I saw it on uh, Instagram or one of them. It was, I think it was on Wilder's uh, Instagram where he had it where the count starts right when Fury drops. I counted it as soon as his back, almost right before his back hits the ground until where he got up. And again, that's only a 10 second count right. without a referee even coming over to mm. it, you know? Okay. Um, but, you know, as far as the, the fight itself, I gave. I gave Wilder, obviously, the two knockdowns. That's automatically four rounds. But I thought, to, and I gave him one other round after that. I thought Tyson Ferry controlled the action, you know, uh, had controlled the momentum of the fight. On the flip side of it, I think that Wilder actually could have made that an easier fight, too. You know, Wilder actually has a hard time with his control. He don't know how to really work to the body. I don't want to put it on a trainer. I don't know what the issue is with that, but he neglected that body a lot throughout the fight. And I just thought that's why Tyson won most of those rounds. You know, he just controlled the action, the pace, and was kind of able to do what he wanted to. And I think that if Wilder went back with his trainer and watched the tape of that fight, they're going to see a lot of opportunities that were missed in that fight. Well, you know, what's crazy about Wilder is how little time he's actually been boxing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really stunning. When he was on here, he told us that he made it to the Olympic team a year and a half into learning boxing. Yeah. And he won a bronze medal. In the heavyweight division, though, you could kind of get away with that, too. Yeah. You can. You know, most of your heavy for well, back then also, were big guys who came up. Usually most of them were football players or something like that, and mm -hmm. they kind of just got into the sport. And still, even to this day, you're talking about maybe three heavyweights that really could throw down, um, as were some of the other guys are just big, sloppy guys that come in. Right. You know. So what do we got now? You got Luis Ortiz. You got Fury, Wilder. Joshua. Joshua. Who else? Joseph Parker. Yeah, Parker. You know, and yeah. I think right now Parker is one of the guys that could actually still upset anybody in the heavyweight division, yeah. especially with that style that he has. Yeah. You know? um, so it's getting interesting again, though. It is. It's, you know? it's certainly – well, I think with Wilder and Fury, that was one of the more interesting heavyweight title fights in a long time. And, and Wilder's so – it's so weird. He's so different. He weighs 209 pounds. He's skinny as a rail. He hits you. It looks like you got hit in the face with a missile. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Well, because that is a missile he's firing. Fucking you know? crazy power that guy has, <laughs> it isn't is. it? And I try to explain to people on that, too. You don't have to be a big guy. You yeah. Know? You know, it's all about the leverage, how mm -hmm. you the torque, uh, where you ge how you generate that power. And, you know, he's just one of them guys that that's one of the things where – you either have it, yeah. you got it in the cradle, or you don't. Mm -hmm. And that's another one that you try to explain, even like in baseball. You're either a home run hitter or you're not. You know, yeah. you could work on it a little bit and maybe knock one or two more home runs out or knock a guy or two out more. But if you don't have it, you're not going to, unless you really go back over and find the time and patience to 
reprogram that fighter and change the whole style. Yeah, it feels like one punch knockout power you either have or you don't. Yeah. And but the the guys who can put it on you and stop you, like Julio Cesar Chavez, never had really that one punch knockout power, mm-hmm. but he fucked a lot of people up. And he had that body shot too. He didn't he didn't need a, a knockout punch to the head. Dude, he was so perfect when he was in his prime. The way he would fight was constant bobbing weaving yep. moving in and then once he put that pace on you mm-hmm. it was just constant damage constant punches the volume the volume the accuracy and the fact that he never got tired he would just keep that pace up bap, 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 bap. and you would see guys just start to wilt just yep. backing up all the time just wilt under that pressure yep and that's the, that, that body attack that he had how he invested into that body from the early rounds People carry those punches, you know, they carry that into the fifth and sixth round. And yeah. it was brutal, you know. I couldn't imagine uh, fighting. I fought some tough guys, but I was glad, you know, being a tall guy, nobody ever went to the body like that against me. <laughs> I would have hated that. 